let's go right into talking about COVID. It's it's a the big issue of the day. It's on the top of all of our minds. And as everyone on this call is already aware, we now know that biodiversity mm -hmm. plays a huge role in causing this current and similar pandemics and plays a role in our health overall, but it also has a role to play in how we rebuild from this sort of a pandemic. So I'm going to start with a question from Assad uh, from SPNL in Lebanon, which is how do you see the way forward to both stop the bankruptcy of nature and avert a global economic meltdown at the same time while respecting human rights and dignity all wrapped in? Well, thank you for the question, which is obviously um, <laughs> just uh, happens to contain absolutely everything on the planet in it. Right? So uh, I'm, I'm going to give myself a bit of time to reply to, to, reply to this one. It, it, it strikes me that the current crisis has demonstrated that the current model is not fit for purpose. MAVA has for many years, with the help of all our partners, tried to address the issue of uh, what we identified as the hotspot in the whole chain. You know, where do we do well? Where do we do not do well? And um, uh, conservation, nature, habitat loss, uh, biodiversity loss is a clear example of that. The fact that we've had this crisis has um, made that even more important than it has before. So the current um, uh, st sorry state of affairs is not linked only on the, the loss of, um, uh, on the arrival of the virus. It's also li uh, linked in general to the loss of, to the weakness of the system in which we are. And though it, it strikes me that if you want to reconstruct the system, we're going to have to introduce a certain amount of resilience. We're going to have to introduce a certain amount of resistance to what's happening. And in order to be able to do that efficiently, effectively, we are going to have to sort of introduce the complexity of our system. And that complexity is something that we will need to look at time after time. I think we can simplify all this in a very simple uh, uh, expression. It's a very simple definition. Um, specialization has something to do with the short term. Specialization has something to do with the uh, satisfaction of the immediate need rather than the long term thinking. So the more specialized we become, the weaker we are. Um, if we really want to make sure that we develop a system that allows us to uh, maximize stability and resilience of our humanity on the planet, we're going to have to increase the level of complexity. We're going to have to increase diversity. And um, uh, if we want to rebuild something, we are going to have to do that in a simple way. And the solution provided by nature, what we call NBS, nature-based solution, actually provide us with a simple way of doing that. If you look at social systems at the moment, we are uh, hit by the most humongous uh, job losses we've ever experienced, especially in the US. And I think we need to construct new jobs, jobs which will allow us to add value to humanity. Uh, the equipment of the whole diversity model will allow us to create new jobs in biodiversity conservation. This is a very simple um, nature-based solution. If I take as an example energy, pro, pro, for instance, energy, until now we have specialized into using very efficient fossil fuels who are giving us a lot of energy in, with a little uh, input. In the future, we're going to have to go to renewable sort of energy and, you know, solar and winds are the two most obvious examples. And these are going to require a lot of investment, not only in terms of money, but also in terms of jobs. We are going to need people to install all this equ equipment and in particular uh, in, 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 in houses. So I think that the future of uh, 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 resilient uh, and, and well-functioning humanity goes through reappropriating nature and using nature in a way that can help us to get to the prosperity that we all, that we all aspire to. So as we rebuild, how do we ensure that we don't revert to the economy of December 2019? Well, I think it's very important to understand that um, the economies of before 2019 or December 2019 was already in deep trouble. We, we, we all knew that. You know, we, we had deemed it the super year for nature. We were going to sort of have uh, the CBD uh, uh, conference in China. We were going to have uh, the, the COP24. 23 of the climate uh, um, agreement in Glasgow. Uh, all these things were going to help us to try to create, with the help of the sustainability development goals, a more st a stable and sustainable system. This um, obviously has accelerated. We have now an opportunity to build things differently. And uh, the only way to really make sure that um, we continue 
to deliver in that respect is to continue what we did before this crisis, but do it in a much more self-assured and uh, loud way. And here, of course, I have to call on all the partners of MAVA who have done such a fantastic job at pushing this agenda at a time when most people did not really understand what we were talking about. Today, it's obvious for all to see. Our system is not fit for purpose. Health. I mean, human health, not just health, but human health, one health in the water sense, depends on a well-functioning ecosystem. And we now have an absolute evident demonstration. What more do we need? If you go back to what was the situation in 2019, we're just not going to be able to get out of this. So here we have a way of accelerating the, the changes that are needed. And I know that we're going to be able to make it. Uh, perhaps I can just add um, the fact that um, uh, uh, companies in general, and we're going to talk again about the role of businesses and the role of, of, of governments, but the fact that um, um, businesses have been so suddenly taken by surprise by a complete uh, uh, slowdown of the economy has uh, encouraged them to go back to the legislature and to the governments and to ask them, you know, can you help us? And governments have been amazingly uh, united into actually providing help. They have not been united into how to do it, but they have all been willing to sort of come and help. And so for me, one of the leverage effects, and we, we are working on that actively uh, within, within MAVA, one of the way of uh, using this situation is to try to impose some green conditionality on the bailouts that governments are proposing to the industry in the broader sense. So, for instance, uh, yes, let's refinance uh, um, uh, airlines, but let's ask them to emit less CO2. Yes, let's, let's refinance uh, uh, the corner shop, but let's ask it to be better insulated, better, better functioning, with a shorter amount of uh, goods that move, etc. So we have a, an opportunity, a, a, a very specific point where we can actually have an impact. And um, uh, when I say we, I mean we collectively, not just MAVA, of course. So it is, it is MAVA's um, uh, role, I think, going forward to influence policy and, and decision makers to help them to take the right decision according to the sort of work we've been doing since the beginning of MAVA. So as we, as we think about the, the collective work that, that we support at MAVA, what for you are some of the ways that MAVA partners can engage in rebuilding better? I think that what we've done until now is, is, is an important issue. We need to protect pockets of biodiversity. And we've done that very efficiently. We've done that, uh, for instance, in the Camargue. We've done that in Prespa. We've done that in, uh, uh, in Mauritania, in the Bon Argan. We've done that in a number of different geographies. And we need to continue to do that and to do that in the in most possible sustainable way. Then we need to, to think about uh, new ways of using this biodiversity in a way that is not only satisfying the current needs, but in the long term. We need to create that circular economy we've been talking about for a long time. And we need to do quite a lot of this. There's also the, the, the notion of new ways of thinking, trying to introduce um, different ways of moving forward the agenda or, or, or when we are confronted to development in the one planet uh, system. And um, there I see a couple of good ideas coming through. But I want to re-emphasize that point. Um, the partners of MAVA did a good job before the crisis. So that crisis has to be used as an accelerator. And that's a very important point. Um, we should not be checked out of course just because we have this, this virus controlling the planet. I mean, the fact that we were completely unable to prepare ourselves to that crisis, which was obviously predictable, strikes me that we, we obviously have a system, that, I'm sorry, it's the third time I say it, but we obviously have a system that's not fit for purpose.